Now we're very conscious that the Fiat Chrysler Alliance is still in its infancy. Most of the paint is still on the palette and we still have much more work to do. We just announced last week a new leadership structure in order to ensure speed, clarity of direction, and unity of purpose. When two enterprises integrate, they share everything, industrial resources and know-how, projects, targets, challenges, and ambitions. But the most important thing that we share is a common spirit and a common set of values. We share a sense of responsibility that comes with running a global enterprise an awareness that our choices have an impact that goes beyond the walls of the office or the gates of our factory. We share the idea that building a better future, respecting and contributing to the well-being of society as a whole is not something that can be left to others. It is a commitment that we ourselves must deliver on each and every day, both inside and outside the organization. Now I'd like to leave you with one very simple thought. When we repaid the government loans on May 24th of this year, I reminded my colleagues at Chrysler that it was more than a moment of celebration. It was also an occasion to reflect on how we got here and why. Now, as always happens in life, the hardest and most difficult moments when you feel lost and you believe that there's no longer hope are also the most meaningful and the most character-forming moments, moments that ultimately change you forever. Those who survive, those who find the strength and the courage to stand and fight, will never be as before. Survivors are different people. They're special people. My colleagues and I at Chrysler are those people. We have collectively found the strength to fight against the death sentence that was placed on our company from the very beginning. We found within ourselves the courage to act and to reverse our fate, and now we're living day by day a new life which is based on what we've learned from that experience. For that reason, we're special people, because we have learned to look at the future in a very different way from others. We have a level of awareness and understanding of the world that is different from anyone else's that makes every moment rare and precious. And we should never forget the experience we've been through, but rather we must treasure it every day. Being survivors has not only empowered us to pull out the best in ourselves, in our work, and for our company, but it's also had an impact on our personal lives. And in the end, it's made us better people. There's an untold story in what we're living in, one that is, in a sense, too early to tell, and it involves the transformation of the people who have led the revival of Chrysler's fortunes, and of the people whose lives they hold in their hands. There are dozens of similar and probably more valid and powerful examples out there. Lou, Gertner, Lou Gerstner's resurrection of IBM, Oppenheimer's experiences with the team that built the atomic bomb in the Manhattan Project, Bill Clinton's remarkable victory in the 1992 presidential election. But the common element with all of them is that they leave an indelible mark on the formation and the growth of leaders. They're changed forever. We have changed forever because we now know that ultimately, regardless of the circumstances, we have the power to refuse our consent. We have an obligation to refuse our consent to decay, to a disengagement from competition, to industrial neglect, to wasteful activities, because ultimately, consenting to these things is a denial of our right to live and to our obligation to protect the welfare of our people. Thank you very much.